Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning comes to us from the Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5. We especially we look at the last Beatitude, verses 11 and 12, where Jesus says these words, Blessed are you whenever they persecute you, revile you, and speak all evil against you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so also they persecute the prophets who were before you. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Mithridates, the sixth, a Pontus. You probably have never heard him before. He was a king who ruled over Pontus and Armenia Minor, which is now modern-day Turkey. But he ruled in the years of 120 to about 63 B.C. And the reason I mention his name this morning, because he is the first person ever mentioned in history to come across the idea of immunity. For he himself was his own guinea pig. He would do science experiments on himself, especially in the, in, the, in the realm of being immune to things. And the one thing he was known about anything else was he would take the blood of animals who would eat venomous snakes and drink their blood. He thought by doing so would make him immune to any kind of venom or poison that would, he would receive from a snake. Interesting, is it not? Even before the time of Jesus Christ, immunity was an issue. Immunity. We also know this word many times today from reality television, from all places. When a competition is going on and the players try to fight and battle and compete for what they call immunity. In other words, they are not to be taken off the show. They are not to be taken out of the game. They have immunity. There's many people in today's world of society who claim that if you follow Jesus, you'll have immunity and your life will be great. Listen again to those words that Jesus says. He says, blessed are you when you are reviled, when they persecute you, and they speak all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Notice in Scripture, there is nowhere where Jesus gives us immunity from persecution, from suffering, from evil, from the world around us. So, we all know we're human beings, and we all know that we ask this one question. No, it's probably not polite and proper to, to say it aloud, but you all have asked yourself the question, what's in it for me? If this is what Jesus offers, that there is no luxury, that there is no great life, but only suffering and persecution, what's in it for me? Why should I be a Christian. What's in it for me? You probably subconsciously say this question to yourself every day. What's in it for me? Because we oftentimes have a selfish attitude. <laughs> it reminds me of a story of a doctor, Dr. Phillips. He was getting ready for his day off. He had his golf clubs by the door, and he was going to the golf course. When he was in the bathroom, getting ready, when all of a sudden, a pipe burst from under the sink, and water was spraying all over the place. Dr. Phillips got underneath the sink, and he turned the water valve off. He called a plumber. The plumber was there, believe it or not, in less than half an hour. Amazing, but he was there in less than half an hour. He got out of his truck, got all of his tools, went into the bathroom, unpacked his tools, fixed the leak, packed up his tools, and went back to his truck. It all took less than an hour. 
he came back to the good doctor and handed him a bill. And Dr. Phillips opened up the bill and his jaw dropped to the floor. He said, you worked less than an hour and you are charging me a thousand dollars. I'm a doctor and I don't even make that kind of money. The plumber replied, when I was a doctor, I didn't make that kind of money either. <laughs> What's in it for me? That's our question, especially when it comes to our Christian faith. What do I get out of it? And there's the problem. Too often, too frequently, we only think in terms of this lifetime upon this earth and not eternally. We many times prepare for life on this earth and not for heaven. We are many times focused only on our earthly rewards and not on our heavenly reward. Wow. It's amazing, but we all are there. We all think about our future, and when we think about our future, we're not thinking heavenly or spiritually. Oftentimes, we're thinking only temporal and earthly. Yes, there are preachers and teachers out there who want to tell you and have gobs of people who follow them and say that life is great as long as you follow Jesus. You'll have fortune and you'll have greatness and you'll live a wonderful life as long as you follow Jesus. But that's not what Jesus offers because they're only preaching about earthly items. Many times we prepare for retirement, do we not? I once remember hearing a church put out a sign outside its, outside its doors on one of those billboards, kind of like what we have here. And the sign read, join church work. The pay is not great, but the retirement is out of this world. Wow. It's maybe humorous, but it's true, is it not? To serve the Lord is exactly what we're all about, but it's not an earthly thing it's a heavenly thing. Remember, Jesus told a parable about this once. He talked about a farmer who had a bumper crop, a huge crop that came in. And what did the farmer do? He told himself, what am I going to do? I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barn and build bigger ones. And I'll store all my crop there. And I will say to myself, self, let's eat, drink, and be merry for we have it made. And what happens? But God comes to the farmer and says, you fool, your life is required of you this very night. How often we prepare for the future, earthly wise, and we forget that the eternal is much grander and much greater. So what are we to do? as people who always ask the question, what's in it for me? And think only earthly wise and not heavenly wise, not spiritual wise. The question is answered. Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again. Yes, we do not have immunity from persecution, from being made fun of, being reviled, being spoken evil of, or even martyrdom, that is death itself, when it comes to following Jesus. There is no immunity in this earth. No, our immunity is eternal. For Jesus himself, the Son of God, he himself even didn't have immunity, did he? For you and I, the Jewish religious leaders, the Roman government, Every soul upon the face of this earth sins, does what is evil in the sight of our God, and has put Jesus upon that cross where he suffered and died, an eternal sacrifice for your sins and mine. And because Jesus died there for us, God no longer looks upon us as poor, miserable sinners, but he calls us his sons and daughters. He forgives us of our sins, and he calls us his saints. And our immunity 
is not upon this earth, but in heaven. You may or may not be aware that this past Monday, I personally celebrated my 50th birthday. What a sad occasion, isn't it? I remember when I was eight years old, I was eight years old, it was the bicentennial of our country, 1976, and I thought to myself, man, wouldn't it be great to live to see the tricentennial? And this coming Monday, I turned 50, and knowing in reality that most people don't live to 100, the thought is, like many of you have, I've lived over half my life already. That's depressing, isn't it? No, actually it's great. Because when we think that way, we think earthly. But in reality, we haven't even lived a day of our life in, in comparison to what is to come. For Jesus Christ died for our sins, and our life is not just upon this earth for the mere 100 years, if even at that. No, our life is eternal with our Father in heaven, for he has called us his saints, and he has called us to his glory, and we are immune up there from all evil and all disaster. But in the meantime, Jesus reminds us, blessed are you when they revile you, they persecute and speak all kinds of evil against you on my behalf. Blessed are you, for you are his saints. Amen.